Hello fam. <laughs> I want to talk to you about condenser microphones. When I started this channel, all I had was like an AT2020, this Michael Jolie modified 990. I have a normal 990 that's non-modified. I've had two of these. These sound really good. You know, Michael Jolie is not in business anymore. About 10 years ago, he was like the only game in town for making these cheap, really good sounding condenser microphones. This is supposed to sound like a Neumann U87. And when I got this, I borrowed my buddy's U87 and me and my buddy got together and we just did a bunch of A-B tests and after a while we couldn't tell the difference. Now that's just one source, vocals, maybe we did guitar. We couldn't tell the difference. But anyways, at the time, this was the only guy. He ended his business. He didn't go out of business. He decided to end his business and he says himself he stopped doing this because he noticed that sales were declining because so many great cheap microphones were coming in from China. The market changed and at the moment there's tons of cheaper, better sounding microphones that you couldn't get like even 10 years ago. In the past week, I've gotten three new microphones. It's funny because I wanted to just explain to you what my impressions are. One of the ones I got, it's the Warm Audio WA-47 Junior. Another one is the Audio-Technica AT4040. And the other one, MXL Revelation 2, MXL Revelation Tube Mic. It's a tube microphone. I'm gonna link, there's been links going there, there's links below to my full reviews for all these microphones. So basically, can I tell the difference between these mics? Can I tell which one in a blind test, can I tell them apart? Maybe? It's not as obvious as you might think, actually. To be honest, I think of microphones that in, in two flavors, and I think of it, how how does this support the sound I'm trying to get or, this, or the problem I'm trying to solve? If it's guitar, it's a really, really harsh sound and there's there's things that I'm trying to mitigate and I'm trying not to get a bunch of room sound. So I'll put a 57, a SM57 right on the grill and I almost always do that, even though I've experimented recently with putting a condenser far away. With the snare, I almost always like a 57, like really, typically really close to the snare, although you get this really intense proximity effect and because it gives you a kick and it also eliminates some room and, right, so that the 57 is great for that. I mean, the 57 is great for so many things, but some things I want it to sound a little more hi-fi, a little more in your face, a little more like present, like, or it's something, it's a professional job and they want it to sound very beautiful and very, very nice. So then, you know, originally I would go for my 990, uh, this, this, modified Jolie one because it sounds, you know, you can hear everything. There's a, it's a, there's a, there's a bright open top end and it's, it's that condenser sound. So I just thought of things in terms of just A and B. Like the condenser does not sound right to me on a snare. It just, it sounds all wrong. It doesn't bring out the things I want. It brings out all the things I, I don't want. Here's a question. I use this and the, and the, the unmodified 990 as a pair of overheads, as a stereo pair of overheads and it sounds fine. They're not matched. They, they, they sound a bit different, but it's not like, oh my God, what a huge difference. It's not the most incredible difference. So kind of my point is that, yeah, the, the, the Warm Audio 47, this one is, is darker. It's noticeably darker. I can't tell you until I run some tests if, if, if I couldn't get a similar sound or the same sound just by taking another microphone that's brighter and doing some EQ to it. I'm not really sure. I, I, I don't know. I have to run that test. I'm, I'm not there yet. You know, I, I, with, with this one, with the, with the Revelation 2, it's a tube mic. Right away, I can notice that there's a really nice thing in the high end. It really brings out the high end in a nice way, and the, the mids are scooped, right? That, that was obvious on that mic. You know, the AT4040 is just like an all-around good sounding. It you know, feels like a workhorse mic, and I don't know, you know, like I'd have to directly compare another microphone to, to see really what the difference is. And, and the question is, well, what happens when you layer stuff? What kind of weird Weird stuff happens when you're when you smash a cymbal. Do you get weird like overtones when you put it uh, on a cymbal or in a room on a guitar cab on different sources? If I hit the Glockenspiel two notes at the same time, <laughs> is that going to bring out a weird <laughs> like rubby sound, a weird overtone in one microphone that it doesn't in the other? The, the whole purpose of this channel originally was to make stuff with just what you have. They're, they're sending me stuff now, so it's not like I went out and bought this stuff. And I'm just saying the same thing holds true. I've I've reached for the AT2020 sometimes because it just it it 
was either the closest thing nearby or it just, I needed a bright sound or it sometimes makes vocals sit well in the mix. It's not always about the most expensive thing. I think if you have a nice condenser or just any condenser, any around a hundred dollar condenser and a 57, you could probably do anything. You could have a couple 57s, a couple condensers and probably record some great stuff. Which one's the best? I don't know. I, you know, maybe when you get into the thousand dollar or two thousand dollar price range, things really change. All of these mics are sub five hundred. This one might be sometimes more, but the rest are typically under five hundred dollars. I mean, here's another example. This uh, this ND sixty eight. It's a kick drum mic. It sounds cool. I use it often, and it doesn't need much EQ. I I, I hardly use any EQ on it because it just sounds cool from the get go, and it it takes compression well. But the fifty seven puts the thump of the kick higher up, like in a higher frequency range. It, it, it like lifts it up, and it it says something different with the kick. It like tightens the kick. I actually sat there and I tried to EQ the ND68 to give me what I liked on the on the 57 and I couldn't do it cuz that cuz that sound it didn't even reach that that it wasn't there was nothing there in that little frequency range but it it's here on the 57 so it depends on what your application is but it, but you know there's some things where you need the kick to be super down low super subby and you know maybe that that sure beta 52 is is the right sound for you I can make things out of clay and lay by the bay I just may what do you say? I mean, that, that thing, I used it for a long time, and it, to my untrained ears, it sounded pretty good. I'm looking at all these mics right here. You can't see them, but I, I, don't, I don't know what the point of this was. Thank you for watching, and have a lovely day.